Hi folks, I'm Martin, it's midweek, these are my musings, this is the Martin's Midweek Musings Podcast. <music> Greetings and welcome to my podcast, this is my weekly journal where I share what I've been up to and answer some of those burning questions you really don't want to know the answers to. That's right, it is Martin's Midweek Musings and this week we're going to return to the original format from week one and two. Because week three had this amount of listener feedback. Tumbleweed. Absolutely nothing. Nobody commented. So it's a little bit disheartening. But do you know what? This is my journal. This is for me. This is for me to have the memories and so that future generations of my family and my friends and, and my kids and, and everyone, they can look back in the future and say, what was what was my dad like? What was granddad, granddad Martin like? Great granddad Martin, you know, look back at it and find out who I was, and here's some of my life stories. So this going forward, uh, I think we'll try and keep to the format we've got at the moment. We'll maybe mix it up again somewhere on the way. But we're going to start this week then with this week's burning question. It, it, not really a question, it's more of a story. And the reason for it is that this week was mine and Morag's wedding anniversary. Our seventh wedding anniversary was Monday this week. So now... Just before we go any further, I want to say this is my third attempt at recording this podcast, so I should have it down by now. What happened was the first one, I got 10 minutes in, the phone went, got 20 minutes through a phone call, went back to check the footage to see where I'd got to in, in my conversation, found I had no sound. Fiddled with it, checked it was right, tried again. 40 minute podcast recorded, no sound. So... I've decided to ditch the external mic. I was using a, uh, my my expensive external mic for this and um, it just wasn't working for the last two attempts, so I've ditched it. So I apologise if the sound isn't quite as good. I wanted to record this in the lounge where I'd done it yesterday and I did week one, where I was comfortable and I had some nice pictures in the background for those watching it on YouTube uh, from the wedding, the wedding pictures, because I was saying on the original version that... Um, we had finally got our wedding pictures up after seven years. It was it was that sort of middle of last year we finally got our wedding photos up, and uh, we, like we say, we got married in two thousand and fifteen. Took us that long to get around to it, but we're having houses and kids and this and that and the other, you know. So we finally got them up. So that was originally in the background, but I've had to move up here today because I got set up down there, and then a house down the road is having some work done, and all you can hear is like a power sander going off every 30 seconds to a minute. It's like, oh, I'm going to have to move so that uh, we're in a bit of a better place. So as you can see, I'm wearing my Italia hoodie with my uh, Gap Rome t-shirt today. And that is because seven years ago, no, seven years ago, yesterday, we travelled off onto our honeymoon. And this time, seven years ago, we were in Rome um, where we visited some of the, the sites um, that you can find and see. There's a lot of them, a bit like in back London, really. Um, there's so much to see, so much history, but we're not going to talk about that today because what we're going to talk about today is how I met your mother, kids. That's right. We're going to talk about how me and Morag met and how we got together. So we got married seven years ago, but I'm going to jump back just a wee bit further than that. Just bear with me one moment. Mm, need caffeine at this time in the morning. So... I better set the scene now. It is in fact Thursday, the 10th of March 2022. It is Mario Day, Martin. Mario. Did you get that? I've forgotten about it until I saw something online yesterday. It is Mario Day. So, March the 10th, 2022. And the time is approximately 10 a.m. Weather's not too bad outside currently. We've broken the cycle. The last two. Fortnights of Thursdays apart has had snow, so they've broken the cycle. Hopefully that means spring is coming and on its way. Let's have no more snow this year. That would be good. So, anyway, I keep digressing from where I'm meant to be going with this. How I Met Your Mother. So we're going to jump back to summer of 2003. I'm fresh out of university. I've moved to South Yorkshire. I've realised I'm not happy in the relationship I'm in, so I've broken that off and moved to in with my uncle in the Lake District, up into South Lakes. So I moved in with my uncle Sam and, and my aunt and, and my, my cousins. My cousin Simon moved around about the same sort of time, I think, because um, he was living with his mum, and at that point he moved in with his dad as well. Pretty sure that was around about then. Um, anyway, so I was living there. I didn't have a job having come out of university. I didn't manage to find any work. 
Um, I had very little in the way of cash. Um, I was on a bit of a downer. So to try and cheer me up, my uncle invited me with him up to Bowness, to the Bowness and Keneal Railway, um, where he'd been a volunteer when he he'd got involved with them when he was working in Dunfermline some years earlier. He used to work Monday to Friday in Dunfermline. And he got involved with the railway there, being a railway enthusiast himself. And he would go for a full week every summer. And on this particular year, he offered to take me with him, um, just as a basically a cleaner, a trainee cleanest grade, if you want to put it like that. It was basically to get me away, get me just to do something and, and try and cheer me up a bit. So, so we did that and I had an absolutely great week. It was a fantastic time. Um, and I met a few faces that I now know quite well. Um, some that are no longer there or no longer with us, unfortunately. But, you know, these things happen. It was a best part of 20, it's like 18 years ago now. 19 years, well, 19 years this summer that I first came to Bowness. Um, and that was just for one week and I had fun. But... I didn't come back again until the summer of 2009. Now, by that time, I got myself sorted out. I was working. I had some money. Um, I was single, uh, still, still single. Um, I had a few relationships that didn't go anywhere. Um, and one of those relationships is key, but we'll come back to that in a minute. I came up for a week again with, with Sam. Um, who was, I think, a driver that by that point, to be a trainee fireman. And my cousin Simon was a trainee fireman as well. Um, and I had a thoroughly enjoyable week. I, I spent a couple of days on the footplate. I think I did a, a, day, a day as a trainee guard on the train. And then actually my dad and his friend Dave were up for that week. And I had a couple of days out with them visiting the Falkirk Wheel, and the fourth bridges and it was things that places I'd never visited before because I wasn't familiar with the area I don't even know up that week prior and we stayed at the railway the entire week that week apart from going out for a bit of food at, at maybe Frankie and Benny's or something like that so I had a thoroughly enjoyable week that week so much so that I started to bond with a couple of the guys there and so they were like why don't you come back why don't you come back so you know I did and then so the following month September was a Thomas weekend I said I'd come up for the Thomas weekend and help out wherever I could, doing whatever I could do with that, helping prep the locos and uh, make sure their faces were clean and their numbers were all shiny and stuff. So I came up and I did a weekend, a Thomas weekend. And again, I started to forge friendships with the likes of my friend Johnny, um, John, who is Daniel's godfather. Um, and there was also Graham, um, who was one of the diesel drivers, and I, we just came to, to to bond, and and I started to make some good friendships there, and then I came back again in October, and in November, and in December, and during this time, I'd been sort of chatting with uh, an old flame on Facebook, and one thing led to another and on one of these trips I actually visited her because it turned out she'd moved to Fife since I had sort of previously uh, had a short relationship with her back in when I was in Scarborough. So we rekindled the romance um, and in I think it was about the March of 2010 I ended up moving to Scotland and we were together for a few months and, and then it, it kind of fizzled out it didn't go anywhere unfortunately. But by this point, I'm in Scotland, I'm volunteering at the railway, I've made a good bunch of friends down at the railway. So I'm not going back to England, I'm staying put. I mean, my, my work, I'd moved up with work. Work was going well, I was getting a promotion. Um, it, life was not in a bad place, even though my relationship wasn't. So I was up here in Scotland, coming to the railway, really good bonds with a few people. And... So, as I say, I'd, I've mentioned John and Johnny, and there was also Graham, who was the deal driver. Now... Graham was married to my sister-in-law, Shauna. Um, and so I'd met Shauna and I'd met Morag's dad, Morag and Shauna's dad, Ian, because he was heavily involved with the railway. Um, so I, I kind of knew various members of the family. And so moving forward, I carried on with my, my doing of, of shoveling on, and stuff and, and being a fireman and doing stuff in the steam shed. And then... In September 2012, there was a rail tour to Scarborough, which is where I'm from. Um, now, I've never been involved with the rail tours. A rail tour, if you don't know, is basically we take a heritage, heritage locomotives with heritage carriages um, 
and run them on the main lines in between all the, the normal service trains to various destinations around main, around Scotland, but also we take some down south to England. Um, and on this occasion, they were, we were taking they were taking a train down to Scarborough from Air, I believe it was. Um, so I thought that that'd be quite good to do. I'd heard a few people talking about rail tours, how they'd helped out on them. So I said I would do that, um, and it was a strange one. It was a Wednesday. A Wednesday. We never ran rail tours on Wednesday. I think it was a very popular tour. It only made money, unfortunately, that one, uh, because normally our tours run at weekends. So we went for this train ride down, and I think it was the first time I'd met Morag's mum. Um, so the, yeah, the rest of the gang were all on there with her mum, her dad, her sister. But Morag wasn't on this tour. She'd been doing tours, but she wasn't on this tour because she was flying out to Canada. And apparently it was the 12th of September, not the 13th, as I previously quoted. So Morag was on her way out to Canada on a plane that day. So I met her, the rest of her family that day. But then moving forward, I, I enjoyed that rail tour. So I started doing some more rail tours. And Morag also did a few of the rail tours and she tended to be on the buffet counter. So that was quite good because the staff generally, when they weren't doing things, were kind of hanging around by the buffet counter, causing trouble getting in the way. And it gave me an opportunity, not not sort of, I wasn't thinking of going and oh, chat her up. It was more just chatting with everybody, really. But I got to know her at that point as well. So a couple of months go by and um, the, like I said, John, Johnny and John and other people had been interacting with her on Facebook. So I'd seen little interactions there as well, because um, that was quite vital to our story is, is, is Facebook. So at one point she shared a picture of her in Morecambe with the Eric Morecambe statue. Morecambe and Wise, very funny comedy duo from the 70s, 80s. Uh, maybe 60s, 70s, 80s. My dad brought me up enjoying Morecambe, the Morecambe and Wise Christmas show usually, the reruns of that on tape and every Christmas. Um, but in Morecambe, which is just around Morecambe Bay from where I was living up in Ulverston prior to my Scotland move, um, and there was a picture of her and the, the, the statue was doing a funny pose and she was doing the funny pose next to it. Um, and I have done that previously with the guys down, down in England. And I commented on that about the fact that it was funny that she'd done that. I've done that and, and yada, yada, yada. And like Mark and Wise, she said she liked Mark and Wise, bit of a chit chat there. Then in the October, there was a rail tour up to, oh, well, up to Fort William and back, and the, the return journey being steam hauled. And rather than work that one, I went on it as a passenger with two or three of my friends. Well, I think there's six of us in the group, um, who are, some of which I've mentioned already. And we were having a few drinks. It was a day out. It was a good day out. But um, I kept going up to... Morag was working the counter that day at the buffet counter and uh, I seemed to spend a lot of time at the buffet counter talking to her um, which maybe was the beginning of some sparks there um, but I didn't really think anything of it and then moving on more tours I think that was the last tour of the year and then into December and end of December we started doing Santa specials at the railway and again the real tour staff help out with that so I helped out one day in the kitchen because by that point I'd kind of been pulled into helping with the kitchen stuff on the real tours. And I helped with supplying mince pies and hot beverages to the children who were coming to visit Santa and, and the adults. And also making sure that the staff on the train were kept replenished with, with tea, coffee and, and that kind of thing. And getting their lunch. And Morag was on the train. So she kept coming back to get the fresh tea, coffee, etc, etc. So again, a bit of interaction, a bit of interaction, maybe a bit of flirting. But then... We get to Christmas Eve. Now, I've gone away back to my dad's for Christmas. Um, I'm going to stay in Scotland on my own, little Bill. Um, so I was down at my dad's for Christmas. And um, it was funny because I think I, I think I wore a kilt. For, we went out for Christmas dinner. And I wore a full kilt outfit. Um, I think. I could be wrong, I think. Um, but on Christmas Eve, prior to this, I was on Facebook. And we'd been to the pub and we had a few drinks and came home and I'm sat on the laptop my dad's watching some comedy on the telly and I noticed that um, I think by this point I'd added more on Facebook that she posted some pictures either she it was either that or it was Shauna her sister had posted some pictures of our niece's Christmas present which was a, a big wooden Brio train set set up all across their lounge 
And Morag had made some comment about she was the only one that hadn't been playing with it or something, and and then she'd been playing with it, and I put a comment on the picture just to make. And then we started a conversation on Messenger, and I made some comment about you know you you best you best go home and go to bed because otherwise Santa will you know not deliver your presents. And it just kind of started a, a, a chain reaction, which was a conversation that lasted till about two half two in the morning, when it was decided that actually we probably should go to bed otherwise Santa wasn't coming. Um, and then there was some some chat on the Christmas day. Like I said, I went out wearing full kilt outfit for Christmas day and then shared some pictures later on on Facebook um, of my Christmas day and she commented something about my knees I'm not sure about my knobbly knees I think I don't know there's something about my knees you'd have to ask her that we'll maybe get her on one week and we'll talk see what her... she can do how I met your father and see what her side of the story is that could be quite interesting what do you think would you like to hear that let me know in the comments um, yeah, so there was more conversation Christmas Day into Boxing Day and I think I came back up the road Boxing Day and there was a bit of texting or messaging or whatever as I, every time I stopped as I was driving up. And then on the 30th of December, the railway was holding a diesel gala. It was one of the days they tend to run uh, a diesel day is between Christmas and New Year. And on that particular day, Morag would been, again, press ganged into doing the buffet counter and uh, I'd um, said oh I can come and help you out I'll even wear my kilt totally flirting totally and only flirting and that day became our beta test to check if in person there really was the chemistry there that there seemed to be through chatting away on Facebook and there was um, she joked about me coming in my kilt I said my monopoly needs can come and help you you know as <laughs> you do oh young free daft um, and it worked. It worked because we're now married for seven years. So that was how me and Morag really started. We we went and we had this beta test. And then a lot of the diesel crowd at the railway, they went out for a curry that night. And Morag was going because Shauna, her sister, was going and the kids were going. And um, I ended up somehow tagging along to that as well. And how nobody noticed the me and Morag thing. Because nobody knew about it at this point. It was between me and Morag, we kept it quiet. And then it got to Hogmanay the following day, the 31st of December, and we organised to have our first date. And I took Morag out for a drive up the Trossachs, which is an area of outstanding beauty. Sort of, it's not the Highland Highlands, but it's on, kind of on its way. Um, it's beautiful. You head north out of Stirling, up through a place called Callander, as if you're heading towards Fort William on that road. Um, sort of to the west of you, across the Trossachs and the hills and that, you've got Loch Lomond and Loch Catrin and various little lochs. Lochs, not lochs, lochs. Um, and it's just a beautiful area. So we went for a drive up there, and one of the things we talked about was the fact that I don't know much Scottish history. I'm English, really don't know much about Scottish history, so she said she would teach me some. So we went up through Calendar, and we went up to a place called Balquida, which is just north of Calendar, and... It is where there is the grave of Rob Roy McGregor, um, which actually Morag, I believe, I, I think, don't think I'm lying about this. I'm sure Morag told me that if you go far enough back in her lineage, she's related to the McGregor clan. And Rob Roy McGregor, quite a well-known Scottish figure. There was a film, which I don't know how true to life that is on, on his actual life, but Rob Roy McGregor. Anyway, his grave is in the graveyard at the church in Balquida. And we visited that, which was really interesting because I knew nothing of it. So I learned a bit of that. I, some of it may have filtered away now. And then we went and we found, we tried a couple of places to, to get food. But being Hogmanay, everywhere was kind of gearing up for Hogmanay celebrations at the end of the night. And we just wanted a lunch. So we tried somewhere called the Rob Roy that was just at the end of the road that goes to Balquida. And we managed to get a, just a soft drink in there because there, there was no food. But we went back down towards Calendar. And just north of Calendar, there's... Um, a wee hamlet called Kilmahog. I've probably murdered the pronunciation of that. But there, there is like an Edinburgh, I don't know, an Edinburgh wooden mill or calendar woolen mill, Scottish woolen mill, like basically at a shop um, that sells a bit of all sorts. And then also a pub called The Lady Inn, and next to it, connected to it, is a Scottish real ale shop where they sell bottled and canned ales from all across Scotland, which is absolute heaven. It's a fantastic place. A little bit pricey. You can probably get the same things in the supermarket a little bit cheaper, but for the selection, it's worth paying a bit extra. So anyway, we found the Laid Inn, and this is the first time I've been to the Laid Inn. Laid Inn is now one of the go-to places for us if we're up that way, or if we want to go somewhere sort of to remember the first time we got went out for a meal. 
Um, I mean, we only had a lunch that day, but it was really good food. It was really good atmosphere. It was a bit snowy out on that day. So it was warm. They had the fires going. It was such a warm welcome. And even though they were gearing up for doing Hogman and Celebrations in the evening, they were quite happy to have us in for lunch. So it was a really nice place. So that was our, our first date. So then we had to head back and I had to drop her back at the house because she was going to a Hogmanay party at uh, Sister Shauna's um, that night. And because no one knew about us, um, I wasn't. I was just going back to Fife for a quiet night in my flat. Um, watched some telly, I think. Um, I sent lots of texts and made phone calls and things to Morag. And it was at about half twelve, one in the morning that she popped out to the car to get something when, when we had a phone conversation that she got busted by Graham, um, who was Shauna's husband at the time, and um, yeah, we <laughs> got busted. Um, and and the attitude was, well, if you just told us, he could have come to the party. And I'm like, what? Why didn't we tell him? We could, I could have had a hug when party with you and everything. But in the event, I didn't. But anyway, that that's how I met your mother. And the rest, as they say, is history. We we started dating. Um, I was living in Fife. Morag was down here, and uh, for quite a while. Um, we used to come and travel to each other's houses. Excuse me, what moment? Oh, I do apologise. We travelled sort of either way to see each other and saw each other through the railway and everything. Um, and everybody found out about us eventually, sort of in mid-January, I think it was. We met up with John and Johnny and, and everyone in Edinburgh to go out for a meal. And uh, they, they, we kind of went, surprise, we were holding hands. And they're like, what? Ah, you didn't tell us, kind of thing. So um i really need to reconnect with some of these people because i feel like through covid we've kind of drifted apart and not really seen these people as much as we were and it'd be really nice to sort of reconnect because they were good friends they still are good friends it's just we don't see as much of them sadly because life moves on people have children we have children um they have their careers and and everything so it'd be nice to get back together at some point and get everyone together for a meal out that'd be good so that's the story of how i met your mother so moving on to what we've been up to this week. So obviously we came back from London last week on the Tuesday. The Wednesday was a quiet day and I recorded the podcast on Thursday. So we'll start from Thursday. Now, I'm not going to lie. After the buzz and the hype of being in London for those five days, the last week up until like Sunday, I was in such a, a, a sort of a crazy funk. I was just I was just not really with it. I just a bit lethargic, unmotivated just felt really, really flat. I had a really flat mood. Um, I don't know if it's, it's also related to what else is going on in the world at the moment because that's not it's not good news for the world, what's going on in, in Ukraine. Um, for anybody, it's just so sad. And, and just, I mean, I don't want to start getting political, but it's just such a sad situation. And let's hope it doesn't drag on, um, but I fear it might. Um, but yeah, that sucks. But I think that's been part of why my mood was so flat for, for last week. That being said, it didn't mean we didn't watch things, play things, do some Lego, and, and, and there was other stuff still going on. So let's get into what we did last week. I'm going to start with what we watched. And we will start with uh, our wedding anniversary sort of film celebration evening. Now, I was working Monday, which was our wedding anniversary. So we decided we would have a nice evening, Sunday evening. And so we had a nice, nice food. And after that, kids to bed. And Morag and I put a film on. And being, uh, we were in a romantic mood because it was our wedding anniversary. We watched the film Moulin Rouge, which obviously we went to see the musical of in London. And it's different to how I remember it. Um, there's, there's certain bits that I thought had a much bigger part in the film that are like a 20 or 30 second throwaway. Now, if you've seen the film, you'll probably remember the absinthe scene with Kylie Minogue as the absinthe fairy. I remember Kylie as that, but I always thought that it was a much bigger... Um, a much bigger part of the film, but it wasn't. It was, it was a throwaway 20 or 30 seconds bit about him getting beginning to live the, the Paris life but I thought there was more of it to that um but I actually found that watching the film there was more of the music that was in the musical was in the film that I'd forgotten was there so some of the big bits that were in the in the musical were in the film that I'd forgotten about don't get me wrong the musical does so much that the film can't and likewise the film does so much more in some areas that, that the musical just couldn't 
so it's really good to see both of them and kind of compare and contrast and I think that the, the, the film is kind of here mid-table and I think that the, the musical is definitely up here, right up here. If you're watching this, you can see I'm gesturing right up high. The musical was actually better, I feel. But don't get me wrong, I enjoyed watching Hugh McGregor, Nicole Kidman and Jim Broadbent in, in, in the film. It was really, really enjoyable. Um, one thing I do need to apologise though from last week, well not apologise but correct, from last week, as I said, there was all this great music in the musical from this band, that band, this artist, that artist and I said One Direction were in it and I was wrong. <laughs> one Direction aren't, there was no One Direction song. Apparently I don't know my One Directions from my Walk the Moon um, because Shut Up and Dance With Me is not One Direction apparently. Um, whoops. Um, but that song has been so stuck in our heads since we came back from London and I'm really concerned because the wee boy has started singing Shut up and dance with me and he just keeps saying it and I'm really concerned he's going to sit around and say it to somebody at school and it's going to upset them and get in so much trouble so hopefully he doesn't do that and hopefully he also doesn't start singing Bad Romance by Lady Gaga because that's another one that he keeps listening to well we've been listening to the soundtrack and they're both on there and also I'll come back to, to, to a bit more in a minute but that's just a yeah, funny story there with regard to Shut Up and Dance With Me because I'm feeling Daniel's going to come out with it so much. Next film we watched, the evening prior, Saturday evening, we decided we were going to do we we're gonna do Moulin Rouge on Sunday. We thought, well, we had a Saturday evening to ourselves as well. So we decided to watch The Avengers or Avengers Assemble, depending where you are. I always thought it was Avengers Assemble, but then on Disney Plus it's just The Avengers. So depending on where you are, I think it depends on, on, on what it released as. But either way, we watched that film and it was really good having watched all the films that were made sort of to lead into that, whether they were made before Avengers or after Avengers, um, to lead into that um, and then see how the ensemble comes together and the fact that they don't in immediately sort of gel. Um, it was an interesting dynamics between some of the cast members and I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Um, it was interesting to see, I can't remember, I don't know the name of the thing, but it's where it starts as a ship and then goes up into the air. Because initially, Morag was like, oh, it's going to go under the water, it's a submarine. And I'm like, no, no, I think this does something else. And sure enough, it went up in the air. And the reason I knew that is because I remember seeing a Lego set. Is it, I, is it, I want to say it's the Ark or something. Maybe I'm wrong. But it, it, it goes up in the air. And I remember seeing a Lego set of it. That's the only reason I knew. So I found that a really good film. Really enjoyed it. Um, and look forward to watching the next film in the MCU, which I believe is Iron Man 3. Um... From here on in, definitely haven't seen any of the films, so please don't spoil them. Um, I, I've even, you know, I've never been out ages and stuff, but please don't, please don't spoil them. We want to enjoy them coming on. Okay, next one, we watched a family film on Saturday afternoon. I want to say it was, um, and we watched Finding Nemo. No, it was Friday night. We had a family family movie night on Friday night. We watched Finding Nemo. Now, the reason for that is that going back to Thursday. Thursday was World Book Day and as such um, the school had sent home a voucher to every child for a free book off a set list of books or a pound off any book from two ninety nine up and you just had to find a participant in retailer which the majority of book retailers were taking part in and so we decided on Thursday after school we would go to then let's go to Far From The Madding Crowd which is a local independent bookshop that we always try and support. Um, rather than the big ones, because um, th these businesses need your money as much as what, well, probably more than the likes of your Waterstones, your Smiths, and what have you. So we try and shop local when we can. So we went to the, the local bookshop, and we managed to get the, one of the books off the list that Daniel wanted, and then ended up with about another two or three books. But we girl was getting a little fractious; she was trying to run around and stuff. So we went and I went with her and had a look at some bits, and we found a few cuddly toys, um, and there was a Nemo, um, and there was also Squirt the turtle. Squirt, Squirtle, Squirt the turtle, the little turtle anyway from the film, and she fell in love with it, so we had to buy that as well. So we got the turtle, we got the books, and um, so we decided actually it'd be quite nice because she got this new soft toy to watch the film. So we did, and thoroughly enjoyed watching Nemo again. It was really good. It's a long time since we've watched Nemo. I, I, I never forget when Nemo originally came out. I think it was when I was living down south with my uncle and that. Um, and if you remember the seagulls that stand on the on the on the rocks, they're all mine, 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 mine. Might get annoying after a while, but we always, me and my uncle and Marcus, we used to just randomly break out into mine, 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 mine. 
just daft. We're, we get daft when we get together. I mean, I don't know so much anymore. We're all a bit older. But back then, we would just bounce off each other, daft stuff like that. Because um, we loved Nemo as well, by then. But we, we enjoyed Nemo this week. Um, even though Diane said, I don't like that film, I don't like that film. And then he thoroughly enjoyed it again. He, he, I don't know what he's with him. He says, I don't like that, I don't like that. And then thoroughly enjoys things again. I don't know if it's just changing tastes or what. But we enjoyed it. It's always good. It's always good to watch Nemo and Finding Dory as well. Um, so that's the films we've watched this week. Now, TV. I watched, I binge watched over two days, series one or season one of Star Trek Picard to remind myself of the story going into Friday. Because on Friday they launched season two. Episode one came out on Amazon. Amazon here in the in the UK. I believe it's on Paramount Plus, I would imagine, over in America. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed watching season one again. I... The thing is, all this new Star Trek, it's different to the original series. But then the next generation Voyager and DS9 era was different to the original series era. And just things have got to move on. And I feel that people are quite overcritical of the new Trek. A lot of people say new Trek isn't really Trek. It's like, well, it is. Do you want to go back to 1980s, 1990s visual effects and... I still understand the people complaining. I think that New Trek, I've not seen the latest Discovery, um, and I'd quite like to go back and watch Series 3 of Discovery again. Unfortunately, it's been whipped off Netflix. Till we get Paramount Plus over here, I'm not going to be able to see that. Um, I think Season 4 of Discovery is being shown on something called Pluto TV, which is an online thing. It's available on Freesat or Freeview, but it's not available on Sky, unfortunately. Um... You can watch. I can watch it through the phone, but you've got to watch it live. And as I've missed the first eight episodes or whatever of Discovery, I can't. I, I, I need to catch up somehow, and, and I can't. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait for Discovery. But anyway, back to Picard. Thoroughly enjoyed season one. Loved the effects. Loved the storyline. Loved the fact that they brought back characters from Star Trek generally, not just the Next Generation, but having Seven of Nine from Voyager in it. it I just really enjoyed the storyline. And everyone, everyone slates it. I really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, um, possibly in response to um, Ronnie, Ronnie's reflections question this week was things I, oh no, it was his things I don't like that other people do like. But this would be something I like that other people don't like. And, and it's Star Trek Picard season one. I thoroughly enjoyed it anyway with the Borg. And, and I'm interested to see where they're going with season two because I watched the first 10 minutes of episode one. And then I had to break. I had to go and do something else. Um, and at that point, I thought, oh, no, they're not throwing Picard straight into a, a love romance straight away. I mean, there's about a year and a half between season one and two. And it's like almost like all of a sudden he's got this relationship that he didn't have before. And it's like, what are you doing? I don't get it. Picard, he's, he's ancient. He's not. He's never really been in a relationship. Why suddenly throw him into one now? So I don't know if that's going to be the long, the long story of the series or two series, because I believe the film two and three back to back. But we'll see where that goes. Um, I might be reporting back in a few weeks' time saying I hate it. Who knows? But uh, it was great. In, in Spoiler warning, by the way, if you haven't seen, or if you're interested in seeing season one, episode one, you haven't seen it, just for the next minute and a half, two minutes, just switch off. Um, yeah, it was great seeing Guinan back. Um, again, people have said, oh, but she's, she's not playing the character like she did previously. Well, yeah, 20, 30 years has passed since she was last in it. You're saying that a person doesn't evolve, doesn't change. Likewise, Picard, change. I mean, okay, I don't like the idea of going into a relationship straight away, but people change. You're not the same person you were 20 or 30 years ago. Yes, you've probably got more wrinkles or, or you're you're here where you weren't here 20 or 30 years ago, depending on how old you are when you're listening to this. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like people change. So I think people need to be stopping so it's a critical and just enjoy it for what it is. I did like the... I, I read an article actually last night, which wouldn't have, this wouldn't have appeared in the original podcast because it was read it last night, was that in the end of season one, the ships at the battle all looked very samey. It was almost like they cut and paste the same ship 40 times or whatever. Whereas the first episode of season two has got, again, an armada of ships, but a lot of them are different. And from what I gather, they've actually taken ships that were from the Star Trek Online computer game. They've brought the, the guys in who produced that, or produced the ships for that, and they've actually brought them into 
Star Trek canon into actual Star Trekness, and they've got them to render them and help them design these new ships so that there was variety in the fleet so everything didn't look the same. So that was an interesting thing to have learned. It was really good to see that because um, you could see it in the episode that the ships were clearly very different. Um, so I enjoyed that about the episode and the little twist at the end, which wasn't really a twist because we've all known it's been coming forever, the fact that Q is in this series. But I did like the little bit where Q appears and he's, he appears pretty much as he was at the end of Starship the Next Generation or early DS9 when we last saw him. And then with a click of the fingers, boom, he's, he's an older looking Q because he's omnipotent. He doesn't age, but he brought himself up to... Um, how he would look similar age to Picard kind of thing with a little with white hair and a wee goatee and stuff. So I quite like that. Um, again, I think that's been slated by a lot of people. Like, just get over it. I enjoyed it. So that's what I've watched this week. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would say my favourite watch of the week probably was Picard series. Well, watching Picard series one and then in the first episode of series two. And I'm looking forward to Friday episode two of that. Actually saying that, I've thoroughly enjoyed the Avengers. <coughs> Excuse me. And I enjoyed watching everything I watched this week. I didn't watch anything that was terrible. No, I was going to tell you about something I watched last night, but I'll actually save that for next week's. Because, actually, no, I'll tell you now. I watched Spy. Uh, it's Melissa McCarthy, and it's got Jude Law in it, and Miranda Hart. Um, and it was a film that me and Morag, one of the few films that me and Morag have been to the cinema to watch since... Whatever, we've not really been to the cinema that much, even in our entire relationship since 2012. But it's one of the things we did go and watch. Yeah, that's that's if if that's kind of it's very much mid table. If, if it was a scale of one to five, I would go. It's 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 like a two and a half. It's not meh, but I wouldn't say it's a great a good film. It's it's, it's goodish. It has its funny moments. I'll go that far. It's just funny moments, but it's certainly not on the great or awesome. It's 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 a very average comedy, um, spoof of a spy film. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we watched this week. I forgot about Spy. So what have we played? Well, not a great deal. Um, I played a little bit of Mario Kart with the Wii dude. Just literally, we did the battle rather than doing the races. We did the battle mode, and I actually found didn't realise that. I thought the, this, the battle mode that we played previously was just one with balloons where you had to pop the opponent's balloons. I thought that was the only mode in battle mode and it wasn't until I went on it and found there's about five or six different battle modes. So it's either ca capture the capture the flag, which is like capture a star, capture the star uh, or the sunshine, Mario sunshine thing, or there's about four or five different things. We've not tried them all yet because uh, I only found out about them literally yesterday evening. And so that's something we played, a bit of Mario. Um, the Wii dude has been playing a bit more of his Luigi's Mansion. He still needs a little bit of help from me, click getting some of the ghosts and reading the stuff on the screen. But he's 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 flying through it. I've I've he's up to floor twelve, of which I think there's fifteen floors. Now he's not collecting everything, not killing all the ghosts yet. He'll go back and do that, I'm sure. But he's well ahead of me. I'm 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 way back. Um, I think he's got about another three floors to get through. I've still I've I've still about floor eight or floor nine or something. So I've still got. About twice as much as he has, because I've just not been playing it. I've not had a chance. Well, I have had a chance, but I haven't had the motivation or I've had other stuff to do. So that's that. And then finally, as a family, again, we've been doing Just Dance. Now, I can see me playing a lot more Just Dance, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Just Dance, we went great fun because when we got the game, it comes with a free trial of Unlimited, Just Dance Unlimited, which basically gives you the full back catalogue of all tracks and dances from every Just Dance game there has ever been. Now that does have a monthly subscription to it. But with the game you get a free trial. Now we thought it was a seven day trial and the plan was that we'd get back from London, we'd put the trial on which meant we had the time off with the kids to do it and then a few days into this week and we completely forgot about it. And it wasn't until Sunday that we went, oh we didn't do the Just Dance trial thing. So we we set it up and actually it lasts for 28 days. So we've got a free month. Um, but it's actually great just looking at some tracks. I had the kids doing Baby Shark, myself and Morag did some of the tracks used. Funnily enough, in Moulin Rouge, we did Shut Up and Dance Me. Oh my days! That is a hard dance on that game to do. You watch, I bet there'll be people listening going, Nah, that was simple, that one. We, we aced it. We got Master, Masterclass or whatever it is. Master uh, Superstar, Megastar. Megastar is the best you can get. 
we, we, we could barely get three stars, let alone the five and then on to superstar and megastar. So we struggled with that one. But um, there was Bad Romance. There, were, there, was, there were various tracks. Shut Up and Dance. I've just said Shut Up and Dance to me. Various tracks that we played and enjoyed. And then it's good exercise. Now, exercise. That's something I need to do because I got on the scales on... This should really be in any other business at the end, but I got on the scales on Monday and I'm over 15 stone, which is over 200 pounds. I've never been this heavy. Um, those of you who know me reasonably well probably know that this time last year I was on a Weight Watchers diet, both Morag and I were, and we started that at the beginning of January last year. And by the summer, I had lost two stone, getting me down to about 12 and a half stone, which means in that time from July through till the end of February, I have put on almost three stone. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I have put on almost three stone. Um, I think that's a combination of Christmas and birthdays and going to London and I don't know, maybe in the winter not being out as I'm going for walks as much and not being as active, I don't know, or just kind of comfort eating. But yeah, I've put on a lot of weight. So it is time to try and shed some of these pounds. So as of Monday, I have tried to eat a bit healthier. I have cut down on as much the amount of chocolate I'm drinking. Tried to cut down on the amount of fizzy drinks I'm drinking. Generally, the fizzy drinks we're having are, are sugar-free but and calorie-free, but I'm still trying to cut that down a bit. And um, it does mean watching how much of this I have, the old coffee. There's obviously the milk in it. The milk in it's gonna be fatty. Even though we use semi-skimmed, it's still quite fatty. And don't like the red top, it's again. It's coloured water. Don't drink it. So we are trying to lose a bit of weight. So I will maybe keep a record of that on my weekly my journal as well of how I'm doing with that. I don't know, I don't think it'll be instant, but what I have started doing is doing some pinch of nom recipes now you might remember from last year we were doing pinch of nom recipes and there's a couple i think there's a video or two on here on youtube on the youtube m m's world channel of me doing um some of the pinch of nom recipes which are low low fat low calorie or managed calorie meal balanced meals rather than stuff that can be like fatty so i've done a couple did one of them yesterday which went down very well because there's a new book come out this year which more i got um either for christmas or for birthday so there was we did bangers and mash pie which was like low fat sausages um with potato baked in the oven basically it was really nice really really good um kids didn't think so much of it but we'll see see how tonight's goes because tonight i'm going to do um mac and cheese with bacon and leek which should be nice because uh, they love the mac and cheese we'll see if we get away with adding a few sly ingredients in there um, but it can be made to a slightly healthier recipe than what we're used to using. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so that's what we played and a little bit about my starting a weight loss journey again. Uh, Lego, just one Brickling Corner come in this week from the shop. Um, and I don't know if that one's going to fly either because, again, it's another one that's coming from America. And it's only for £5 worth of stuff. It's two Duplo docks. Um, and I don't know if they're going to pay. Because the last one that came in from America for about a £5 order they cancelled so i think this one might cancel as well but we'll see fingers crossed um i've added about a thousand more parts to the store this week um still in the process it's kind of laid out on the bed here process of putting it all away um the trouble with doing i did quite a big set and the trouble with that is that you end up having maybe one or two of this bit one or two of that bit one or two of this bit and it's quite time consuming to put away i think if i'd maybe parted out two or three of the same smaller set whilst i have the same number of pieces You'd have more of each, so it'd be less draws putting stuff away. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I still need to get the rest of that put away. But one thing that was nice on Sunday, as well as doing Just Dance, is we had a family Lego building session. So Morag has been, over the course of about six months, building Winnie the Pooh 100 Acre Wood. And she finally finished that this week. And it looks fantastic. Um, hopefully I'll get her to do a little sort of walkthrough review of that on our Lego channel, Our Brick Life on YouTube um, and Daniel we were in Tesco's the other day and we spotted the Luigi starter set and it was at half price you never see that at half price so it's like right okay you can have that as a treat um, we'll get you that so we got him that 
and he built that up. So we were playing a bit of Mario and Luigi with the two of them, having built up the starter set. Um, we were playing with that a bit, and Wii Girl, I bought her a couple of weeks ago, a Frozen set, just a Wii, not a £9 Frozen set that's got Elsa in and a bit of an archway with some things. So she built, I helped her build that up, and it's really good to see her starting to kind of follow the instructions. Not very well, not very well, but she is starting to put a few bits and pieces in the right places. Um, with some assistance and kind of pointing out where they need to go. Um, it's funny because I'm pretty sure that Daniel at her age was beginning to follow instructions a little bit better. I don't know if it's how the, the male brain, the female brain work. So I know some, I've heard some people say that girls can be more creative um, and the, the you know lads can be a bit more sort of switched on with following sort of picture instructions like that. So I don't know if it's something to do with that or if it's just that she's less interested or, or what, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's good to see her starting to build stuff up anyway. And I built a, um, a Mustang GT. It was a set that I was sent by Dr. Green for part of my Secret Santa at Christmas. It was a Speed Champion set that's actually a few years old now. So it was fantastic to get that one because it's one that I never had uh, at the time. So it was really nice to build that up. And that's gone in our display cabinet downstairs. And I look forward to building a couple more Speed Champions to go with it. One of which is in that bag there. But I'm saving that for a couple of weeks because what, it's, a, it's a twin pack of cars and one of them is a Formula One car. And with the Formula One starting up again in a week or so's time, it would be quite good to build that when the season starts. Um, so hopefully we'll get that in the cabinet along with the, the, Ford, the is it Ford Mustang GT. It's a green one <laughs> with yellow wheels. <laughs> My apologies if you're, you're into your cars. So that was what I built. Now, any other business? Because we are running out of time, unfortunately. Um, Daniel, he has this week been... Um, every week he goes to his Highland Dancing. And he this week received a certificate for an exam that he did back in November, and which he passed, obviously, because um, he's a little superstar. He loves his dancing. Uh, he's the only boy in the Highland dancing class, and his teacher loves that, the fact that she's got him in the class. And, and he really enjoys it, and it was really positive feedback from his exam. Um, I've already told you about him. Keeps coming out with Shut Up and Dance with me. Um, so hopefully, like I say, he's not repeating that in the playground. Um, and also on World Book Day, I forgot to mention, he dressed up as Where's Wally, or Where's Waldo if you're over the other side of the pond. Um, and the unfortunate thing was that the real question of the day was Where's Wally's hat? Because he went in with it to school and by first play time he'd lost it. And unfortunately, even now, a week later, it still hasn't turned up, sadly. So unfortunately, it's, it, he looks really good. He's got the trousers, the little top, he's got a pair of glasses. He looks really, really good in it. Unfortunately, he lost the hat. Um, that's quite sad. Moving on to the wee girl. Um, she hasn't done a great deal this week, um, other than she has a sw she has a swimming class on a Friday, and I was in the pool with her this week, and I was the only one in there. It was like a private lesson, and the teacher said to us that um, we need to see about getting her moved up into her, the next class. So we did that, and she has now moved up, which means, other than getting a change, myself and Maura are a little redundant. We don't need to go in the pool anymore. So we girl is going independent swimming. Uh, from this week, tomorrow will be her first lesson. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss it. I'm at work. Um, but, which is sad. But it would have been nice to see her in her first lesson. And that's basically been this week. I'd like to thank you for coming along for the journey this week. If you've got any suggestions for week for questions for coming weeks, please do submit them in the comments. Um, if you've got any comments about this week's podcast, thank you very much for listening and leave those comments down below. I hope you have a fantastic week and it's everything you dreamed of. Bye-bye.